Hi guys, back. Um, don't mind the noise in the background. That's the laundry being done. So, this is a special video I want to make for somebody who asked a question in the comments. Going back to some tube theory stuff. So it's going to be a tube theory video. Uh, they asked a question that was, I consider, a very excellent question. And I'm going to read it off exactly how they asked it. They, they wanted, uh, what is the design characteristic of a vacuum tube that allows the amplified signal, such as an A string of a guitar, to sound the same as the input signal, only amplified? So, in other words, basically, what is going on in that? Is there a characteristic? Is there something about the design of a vacuum tube? that and we'll be talking about class A operation because that's really where this is going to be aimed at uh, that allows it the input signal to be uh, amplified but yet be the same exact signal that comes on the output so the two are similar signals meaning that they have the same uh, same frequency but they the outputs only amplified so I'm going to try to answer that um, basically by showing some things here and uh, hopefully I answer it good enough to, for it to be understood. So we're going to answer this by looking at a graph and we have a line here a line going here. All right. This is zero, this is plus, this is minus. Now, this represents plate current. So I'm going to put P, um, well, let's use uh, I sub P, that'd be better. I for current sub P for the plate. So this is the current that's in the plate circuit of the tube. We're going to be looking at basically a triode, something like a 6J5 or any number of triodes. This line here, the horizontal line, is our grid voltage. So um, I'll put V sub G for that. Right here is zero. This is minus, and this is positive. Generally, you will never be in this range region for grid voltage. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, for 6J5, uh, they're what, what is known as a sharp cutoff tube, meaning that uh, it doesn't isn't what they call variable mu. Uh, I've explained that about what I'm talking about there in a previous video, so I really won't go into it. So, if I actually look at basically a line that represents um, these two in a particular tube on a sharp cutoff, it'll kind of come something like this, a little bit of bend, but then it goes straight and then it bends over. Okay? And this should be a little straighter than it is. Okay. Now, in Class A operation, I would pick an op operating point, and I went over how to pick the operating point for Class A, but somewhere around about in here, about midways between the two what they call knees, bends. Sharp cutoff means that fairly low negative voltage is taken to kill the tube. It shuts it down. Because right down here at the bottom, plate current is zero also at this point. So when the tube is at a, a reasonably low uh, negative voltage, not very many volts negative, it will shut off all current flow through the tube. And I'll show later one that is 
what is known variable mu or remote cutoff, which is not generally used for amplifiers like this. Uh, so this is cutoff region. This up here, the knee kind of bends on past a certain point, the grid going positive, and then it finally flattens out. It's called saturation. The tube's putting out the maximum amount of current it can put out. But the main thing, and what answers the question, is this straight line. It's called linear linear portion of of the operating point. This is fairly straight, and when this is fairly straight, as the tube signal coming in goes back and forth, it stays in this region, which means then the amplification signal will be the same. If I get down in here in a curb area or up in this curb area, then I start getting distorted signal. It doesn't look the same. But as long as it's in this realm where it's straight here, then what I put in will be rep perfectly represented on the output, except just a bigger signal. It's more amplified. So if I can actually draw this, and uh, mind you, my drawing's not the best. But if I bring kind of a dotted line down here, assume that's straight. Okay, that's our uh, negative voltage operating. And we'll bring that on down like this. If I put in a signal here, there we go, something like that. Uh, assume it's more better looking. My drawing, especially like this around the camera tripod, is not the easiest. That would be my signal moving back and forth. Now, I'm not concerned on this graph how many volts one way or another because that will vary with whichever type of tube. We take a point up here and we come right to there and we take this other point. Try to keep it straight. And it comes up here. And we bring this line kind of straight across. This here and this one here will be, well, what is represented on the output. So when the signal goes more negative, right here, then this is going to go down like this, and then it's going to go back up like this. Okay, But these two are very similar. They'll be the same frequency. The deviation from zero to the positive peak and the deviation from the zero to the negative peak should be the same and identical to the signal going in. That gives you what, if you're listening to it, that'll give you that tone sounding exactly the same except it's louder because it's amplified. And it's all because as long as we stay within this straight line. Now where, you won't find this graph. You have to actually plot this out. But where you find it, or where you can get the plotting numbers from, is in the tube manual. And let me do a little bit of rotation here and see if I can zoom in on it. Focus. Okay. That straight line on the other graph represents where these are straight right through here. These lines here are grid voltages. And basically what you're doing when you pick an operating point, um, you're picking it up, not down here, but up in this area up in here where these lines are straighter. And it's the straightness of these lines that is that characteristic that allows it, it's called linear amplifier, it allows it to uh, represent 
the output, the output signal being exactly the same as the input signal other than the fact it's amplified. It's a stronger signal. But our, all our characteristics, frequency, deviation from zero, you know, the two peaks are the same uh, amount. The negative peak is the same size as the positive peak, and so on. As long as that's what your input signal is doing. Now, it will be identical to the input signal, except for the, the uh, well, two books going bad anymore, coming apart, except for the fact that it's uh, amplified. Now, to get a little deeper into this, why, and I don't have any parts here right now to show you, but why is it that it does that? Oh, I was going to show you why I got this on here. A remote cutoff tube, and I guess you would like to see it. So, I guess I'll zoom out. Zoom in just a little bit. Okay, uh, this is sharp cutoff here. And a remote cutoff will come in, well, depending on the tube. Let me see if I can get that line drawn straighter. So it will come in somewhere back in here, and then it'll slowly go up and bend quite a bit, and keep bending, and then finally come up and roll off. It has a shorter linear region. There's actually more bend in here than what I put. But the cutoff is a long ways negative. A lot of remote cutoff tubes, the average is minus 35 volts, maybe minus 40 volts. Uh, sharp cutoff could be uh, somewhere around minus four, five, six, depending on the tube. So these are used um, basically in the IF sections of TVs and radios for ABC because a sharp cutoff with ABC doesn't work very good. The remote cutoff gives a nice operational. Uh, adjustment of the gain because of the ABC circuit voltage. Now, how does it get that linear portion? I mean, what's going on inside the tube? Well, if we look inside the tube, let's see if I can draw this. Uh, you got your cathode here, which is a, a tube, and the heater is inside this okay and then this attaches outside the tube you know to the two pins then you'll have two support bars that come in here and on those support bars if we can draw them straight is the grid and it's coiled up on here It'll start here and it goes like this and comes around like this and comes around, 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 and just keeps going, okay? And I'm not drawing it really to scale or properly. Um, to make it linear, the spacing distance between this wire and this wire and this wire and so forth all these spaces need to be equal when they're equal you get a real nice linear region it creates that nice line now if you contrast that to I'll just draw the grid to the remote cutoff grid it's more like this starts widening out in the center it gets pretty wide and then it starts narrowing back up again something like that it's narrow on the two ends the spacing but wide in the center 
This area in the center will be about, it's about one third all the way through. About one third here, one third here, one third here. The area in the center, they try to keep it pretty steady. But the, once it starts squeezing up, these progressively get tighter. So the spacing continually changes as it goes along. But only in that one third center will it be equal spacing until we start hitting where we're going to start squeezing off. That center represents the only linear portion of that um, grid voltage curve that I showed on the other on the other graph on here. The real curve, long curve before it goes to finally cut off is represented by where it's progressively getting narrower. That's what happens there. So if I don't want it linear then I I just make these things progressive changing distance separating them. If I want it linear, and the more linear I want it, the more tighter tolerance do I make sure that these are the exact spacing. Now the distance between them can matter too and does uh, depending on what type of tube it is, if it's a triode, a pentode, or a tetrode, also uh, different characteristics of tubes, what mu mu is nothing but the amplification factor uh, that I want and various other things so um, different tubes that's why we have so many different tubes even if they're all like a whole bunch of them in sharp cutoff range will have different spacings in here to fit certain things uh, certain mu factors certain um, other characteristics but the linear portion depends to make it linear I have to have these equal spaced and that's what gives it so mu is actually the main char characteristic that we're looking at and that's what's used to make that graph that I showed before I race it into this uh, and as well as the graph basically in the in the uh, tube manual I hope I answered that good enough. Uh, if you do have any more questions, just you know, comment on it again, and I'll see if I can kind of uh, give a better answer or something. Um, I might even have a triode tube that I can open up. It's easier to see than a pentode or tetrode uh, to show you the grid. Uh, you know, bad one. Uh, check around, but in any case. That's why uh, you get an exact representation of that signal from input to output. Uh, and so your tone stays the same other than it just gets louder. It's amplified. And each stage it just will get louder beyond that. So, so anyway, uh, if you like the video, it's kind of a short one. Give it a big thumbs up. And, you know, if you do have any more questions, um, just drop me a line, drop me a comment. Uh, now, on the last video, there's been a couple of you that answered, tried to uh, have, a, um, gave me an answer for the question I had in it. I will not comment back, only not until after I'm done, uh, w when I do the other video, because I want everybody to have a chance to try to answer that question. I mean, right or wrong doesn't make any difference. It's, a, you know, you're learning. Uh, so don't worry about it. And as far as anybody else has any other questions, um, I'll tell you what a teacher told me once back in sixth grade, a few years back, you know, when the dinosaurs were on the earth, uh, told the class that the only stupid question is a question that is never asked. So, ask if you want, you know, there's something you don't understand or something you want to know about. Because that's the only way you, get, you, you gain knowledge and learn. So, anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.